the game porting toolkit. Seems, you know, again, flew kind of, by. Kind of melting the internet right now is what I've been told, yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, it's true. This little tiny bit of software which Apple decided to release at the Worldwide Developers Conference has blown the Mac gaming community's collective mind over the last few days. That's because it's a free piece of software which allows you to run Windows Direct X12 games on your Apple Silicon Mac for the very first time and the results are far better than we could have imagined. Today I'm going to show you 10 different DirectX 12 games that are now compatible with Apple Silicon hardware. Now one thing that you have to be aware of is the fact that the game porting toolkit is merely a translation layer that's designed for developers. It is not intended to be used by the public or by gamers like ourselves. These games are running through two different translation layers. The first is Rosetta 2 which translates x86 instructions into ARM64. And the next is Apple's own proprietary D3D Metal, which translates DirectX 11 and 12 into Apple's Metal Graphics API. All these translations happening on the fly have substantial performance overheads, so don't be surprised that a game runs slower than its PC counterpart. And that's because these games are probably tapping into less than 50% of the potential performance that they could have if they were natively optimized for the Mac. Yet, despite all of these hurdles, many of these games actually perform very well, and that's all down to the raw power of these new Apple Silicon chips. So without further ado, these are 10 DirectX 12 games tested on Apple Silicon Macs. So the first game we're gonna be looking at is is Cyberpunk 2077. So this is probably the most surprising game that could actually work through the game porting toolkit since it's such a benchmark of gaming performance and the fact that it manages to run so well through this translation there is definitely the most surprising game on this list. However, the performance even on the very expensive M1 Max chip with 32 GPU cores and 32 gigabytes of RAM is still a little bit lackluster. Here we're hitting about 27 FPS. Pushing the settings down to the medium graphics preset doesn't really change that much. The FPS stays about 29 to 32 FPS, which is not a huge amount of difference. And of course, playing on the low graphics setting is gonna give the best performance. Here we're averaging around 36, 37 FPS in a slightly more open area of the game. So by doing a playthrough of Cyberpunk 2077 on my M1 Max, I'd probably set it to the low preset at 1440p, or even push down the resolution even further to 1080p. Either way, the low preset still looks really damn good. And I'm just happy that this actually runs and is compatible on the Mac. And it just seems to work right out of the box. No game breaking bugs, no huge graphical artifacts or stuttering. This is probably the game to play on the Mac on the game porting toolkit. So next up is the game Diablo 4. And this is another surprise hit with the game porting toolkit, especially as this is a DirectX 12 game that just came out. Here we're running the game at 1080p at the ultra graphics preset and the performance I would say is very good. Another game with no substantial issues, no stuttering, and as far as I can tell, no game breaking issues. On the M1 Max chip, we're getting around 50 to 60 FPS at this 1080p ultra setting, and it plays very well. I could probably test this at 1440p and I still probably play very well. So here we're gonna test out Fidelity FX Super Resolution Mode. So without it, we're getting about 50, 52 FPS. If we turn this onto ultra performance, we're getting about 10 frames per second more. However, everything does end up looking a lot blurrier. However, this mode is really handy on the lower end Apple Silicon Mac chips. So this is my MacBook Air with the M1 with eight gigabytes of RAM and eight GPU cores. On the low graphics preset in this dungeon monster area, we're only getting about 25, 26 FPS. And here in this open area, we're getting about 32, 33 FPS. However, if we turn on Fidelity FX Super Resolution to the ultra performance mode, we're now hitting 40, 45 FPS, which is a pretty huge improvement. It takes the game from being merely runnable to actually playable, but at the sacrifice of quite a lot of graphical fidelity. But anyway, I'm glad that it works even on the lowliest M1 chip. So next up is the Remedy game Control. Now this has been playable on Apple Silicon Mac through Crossover and Parallels, but those were merely the DirectX 11 version of the game. This is DirectX 12 running on the high graphical preset at 1080p on my M1 Max chip. And this is another game that runs surprisingly well. This compares very favorably to the Crossover version running through Wine D3D and also the Parallels version as well, which was prone to a lot of stuttering. The way this game runs through the game porting toolkit is very impressive. Whether it's through this cavernous tutorial area, which is very, very smooth, or through the chaotic multi-enemy room fights, we're still getting about 40 FPS, which is very good compared to how it used to run through crossover and parallels. And even though this is a little bit old, this game has great graphics and is a real showcase for the game porting toolkit. 
Next up, we're looking at Dead Space, the remake released in 2023, the DirectX 12 version. We are running the game at 1080p on the high graphics preset with FSR mode set to balanced, and it's running admirably well on my M1 Max chip. And whilst you could play the original Dead Space 1 and 2 using parallels, and it did work okay, this is going to be the first time you can run the DirectX 12 remake with modern redone graphics on the Frostbite engine. So there seems to be decent fluctuation in what the frame rate is going to be like within the game. We're not hitting a solid 60 FPS. However, I still call this very playable. Most importantly, however, is the fact that the action sequences don't slow down that much. We're still getting around 35 to 45 FPS during the combat scenes. However, the performance is not consistent. For example, during this white explosion, it looks like a shader compilation stutter, which thankfully wasn't that long, but can be quite annoying. However, at the end of the day, I still call this one of the better performing DirectX 12 titles on the Mac. Next up is Elden Ring, which is one of the most requested titles for compatibility on Apple Silicon Max. Here we're running the game on the low graphics setting at 1080p. And I think you're gonna wanna turn it down to low because you wanna get as much frame rate as possible in a game like this. So in order to launch this game, we can't use the easy anti-cheat version. We have to use a fix in order to launch the non-easy anti-cheat version, which also means that we can't play the online multiplayer version using this method. This is a fully offline game. If you want to find out how to launch this yourself then make sure to follow the link in the description for the Elden Ring Apple Gaming Wiki article. We're making a video tutorial on it in the future. So overall decent-ish performance on the M1 Max chip at 1080p low. I think I would call this the minimum level of performance to have an enjoyable game experience. However if you're trying to run this on the base M1 then I wouldn't really recommend this as you're only going to get between 15 and 20 FPS. Probably M1 Pro or later is going to be the right for you. Especially as this is quite a graphically complex open world, it deserves a slightly more powerful Apple Silicon Mac in order to run it. So next up is Hogwarts Legacy. So this is another very recent DirectX 12 title that came out earlier this year. Today we are testing at 1440p at the medium graphics preset. AMD FSR is set to performance mode. And one thing you'll notice is that when you boot up the game for the first time, it's gonna go through shader compilation loading. And in theory, this should prevent any kind of stuttering from shader compilation when you see new animations and spell effects, which is a nice addition for any game to have as it kind of front loads that loading it doesn't interrupt your gameplay. So one issue that a lot of people are going to experience when they're trying to run this game through the game porting toolkit is the fact that the game runs fine on first launch. However, if you try to relaunch the game, then you're going to come into issues. This is actually caused by Steam updating several files, which cause a conflict and stops the game from loading again. And if you check the link in the description for the Apple Gaming Wiki article, you're going to see a fix for this. All you have to do is to go ahead and delete those files, and then the game will be fully bootable again. And once again, this plays very nicely on the Apple Silicon Mac on my M1 Max, we're getting 30, 35 FPS at 1440p at medium settings. So next up are the two Spider-Man games, Spider-Man Remastered and Spider-Man Miles Morales, which were both released on PC back in 2022. Now both of these games are very demanding, and for the first time I think that the MacBook really struggles to get a consistent, even experience with either of these games, even with a Mac as powerful as the M1 Max. So here I'm running Spider-Man Remastered, and we're only getting about 30 FPS at 1080p, on medium settings, but the frame pacing is kind of everywhere and the stutter is consistently bad. And so it's a little bit difficult to play as you're trying to swing around, but it's not quite connecting and it feels a bit juddery. Combat is a similar deal. We're dropping into the 15 to 20 FPS mark, which is a little bit disappointing. Here I've tweaked the graphics settings to very low at 1080p. We're getting around 30 to 40 FPS. This is okay, but the frame pacing is not great. So the combat doesn't feel very good, even though the frame rate looks okay and a very low preset. The swinging is okay, but it can really jut it down into the 18, 20 FPS mark, which is a little bit disappointing. In interior areas, the framework can actually get really good, 50 to 60 FPS, but it's also here that I started noticing these weird black artifacts that would appear and cover the entire screen, making it unplayable. You can actually fix this by going into the graphics setting menu and changing the preset around a bit so that the game would kind of reload. So it did get a little bit annoying. So performance with Miles Morales is also a little bit bad as well. I'm testing this at 1440p for some reason and running at very low settings, getting 23, 25 FPS. It feels okay, but it could be better. So if you're trying to get this game to run through the game porting toolkit for the first time, it's gonna say that you don't have an up-to-date version of Windows. You're gonna need a fix, which is on the Apple Gaming Wiki website. Leave a link to this in the description and you can try this out for yourself. 
So next up is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So out of all the games on this list, this is probably the most well optimized. Here we're running on the M1 Max chip at 1080p at the high graphics setting. So this used to be playable on Parallels on the Apple Silicon Mac. However, there was an issue where it was sometimes crashed during a cutscene, so that was quite annoying. And the performance wasn't great due to the fact that the virtual machine had restricted cores and RAM. However, here through the magic of the game porting toolkit, managing to hit the 70 to 80 5 FPS mark even during intense combat scenes and even during summons as well with all of those extra spell effects shaders and animations still maintaining that really rock solid 70 80 85 FPS mark so I definitely say that this is one of the more well optimized games for game porting toolkit and the game looks fantastic as well on my M1 Max chip and it's not just restricted to higher end Max the M1 chip can also run this game pretty well this is how the game looks at 1080p on low settings on the M1 and if we tweak down to 720p we're getting a decentish frame rate 30 to 35 FPS so lastly we have the fantasy first person shooter Shadow Warrior 3 here we're running on my M1 Max at 1080p at the high graphics preset with these FSR set to balanced. So frame rate is actually pretty good, 50 to 60 FPS most of the time, but there is substantial amounts of stuttering within the game. Now this was actually playable on Apple Silicon Max using Parallels, but it had terrible performance, and you could also use Crossover with CX Patria and get this working pretty well too. However, this is again the first time we can play the DirectX 12 version of the game, and the performance is surprisingly not too bad. So anyway, DirectX 12 games on Apple Silicon Max are pretty revolutionary and I'm really happy that we have at least 10 very good DirectX 12 games to play on Apple Silicon Max and they work pretty damn well. If you'd like to find out more about how to get any of these games installed, then make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki website for the most up-to-date tutorials and fixes. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.